So welcome everybody to this year's Cloud Foundry Summit in Europe. My name is Simon, this is Dr. Max, and uh, we're here to tell you a little bit about um, Cloud Foundry and about Bluemix. So what's Bluemix? Bluemix is the IBM offering that um, we created um, as a started from an internal development thing. People wanted to just be able to push uh, apps very quickly. And by now actually became the largest Cloud Foundry service in the world, I think. So we're having 20,000 new users per week. We're running 420,000 new apps per month. We have hundreds of services in the Bluemix service catalog. And we're literally having 7 billion, more than 7 billion service API calls in a month. All that we accomplished in, within a few years, starting off basically from the green field. And how we got to that, Max will tell you. Right, so of course, I'm just one member of a larger team, and some of them are here. Uh, and I'm only, we only have four minutes, so I can only cover a subset. But what I want to say is that it's been really good, a really good symbiosis. You know, what symbiosis means is like a relationship, you know, in organism. So let's talk about some specific. So for instance, services, CF services. Um, last year when we launched Bluemix, or a year and a half ago, I guess, uh, one of the things that happened is that we needed to add services for analytics. And those services, as you probably know, take a lot more than 60 seconds to uh, provision and to get ready. So what we did is we worked with uh, Pivotal, uh, our partners, and we added asynchronous operations to services. Uh, and this was kind of something that started, uh, I think, in January. And by March, I was basically embedded to the team, and we, we had a working version. The other thing that's important is I, could, I was able to bring in somebody from the Bluemix garage to help. So this is one example. Another one is services keys. So the Bluemix platform has a container services uh, um, set of service that are independent of Cloud Foundry. But these needed to talk to the same CF services that we had in the past, or that we have. And what we did with uh, collaborating with Pivotal again is to add services keys. And what's interesting about services keys in terms of the development effort is I started it, and then I have a team in China where I needed to work with them. So what I did is I went to China and essentially got them to complete the work, working with Pivotal. So this is another example within three months we got done. Another one that's sort of close and dear to my heart is Bosch, uh, mainly because that's the project I contribute the most to. Uh, probably not as much as Dr. Nick, but almost. <laughs> I'm trying to compete with him. Uh, external CPI. So you heard Sam talk about the fact that Bosch supports all these uh, clouds. Well, guess what? It wasn't like this before. All of those clouds, the code for the clouds, were embedded in the director. So what, I, what we did, and I contributed a little bit to that, is to help uh, you know, Dimitri and Maria and the rest of the team to essentially figure out how to remove the CPI and then part of this was to kind of self-serving, we needed a new CPI. So I went ahead and started, created that, and then now that's sort of flourishing. Um, other things are incubation. So for instance, Abacus, we're actually collaborating with SAP on this one, where we, it's the metering engine for Cloud Foundry. Um, another one is Swagger. Uh, it's essentially trying to provide standard description for services in Cloud Foundry. Uh, HPE has showed interest, so we're looking at the V3 APIs, for instance, for this. Uh, and there's a few more. So can't really talk about all of them, but one of which that Simon leads is the bit services. So the final thing that we're going to talk about is the bit service, which is a, an incubation project that is really scoped around managing bits. It has a service, CF service-specific abstraction um, of object stores, clearly defined API. and um, it comes with batteries included for open source codes, which means the most common object stores are actually already supported out of the box. Um, I want to conclude this talk with really the lessons learned, like we started. Like we have a strong open source collaboration, as we just showed. We have been building this for a few years now. I've been working with Cloud Foundry for, for a while. And there are a bunch of things that uh, we learned on our way, right? First is you need, if you want to run a Cloud Foundry, you definitely need to have a reliable IaaS, particularly if you run at scale. You need to monitor, you need to automate, you need to analyze, and you need to repeat, because the operational things is uh, the most critical part when you run something like that. You've got to be prepared for the weirdness, 
Because I can tell you by, 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 by a fact that if you do something, if you repeat a task 600 times for 600 VMs, there's going to be one that's failing for no apparent reason. Right? So there is some of those things that happen. Um, last lesson learned is many small deployments are much better than having one big deployment. So if anyone wants to, to grow at scale, keep that in mind. And last but not least, and this is why we're all here, this is why we're here for the conference, open source collaboration works. Right? This is the proof. Bluemix is the proof that it works because without the open source community, without the work that we have been both investing as well as putting into the open source community, nobody would be standing here. So thank you very much for listening. Have a great conference. Talk to you soon.